It's Tuesday, January 31st, and time for your Bobby this today morning update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The construction of the proposed Hyatt Hotel may worsen the recent problem of raw sewage spilling into the streets along the south coast and in certain parts of Bridgetown. So warns former member of parliament for the city, Dame Billy Miller, who says the Bridgetown sewage system is already experiencing a severe overload. And she is appealing to Prime Minister Frondel Stewart to ensure a comprehensive environmental impact assessment is done before his government proceeds any further with its plans for Carlisle Bay. A lot of truth in that. I am concerned about 250 rooms, at the very least, I'm sure. What proposals the Hyatt construction would have for the soaring and the heavy load from that hotel, what it would be implications for what would happen at Lake Folly. I am also concerned that in the absence of an in-depth EIA, there is no way of knowing what could happen. I am hoping that Prime Minister Stork will have taken into consideration all of these things I think, in fairness to the Barbadian community, we ought to see an impact assessment, and there ought to be at least one or two pound, um, town hall meetings which will allow people to speak to, to various interests. Meantime, Attorney General Adriel Brafwit believes a number of heads should roll at the Barbados Water Authority over the sewage mess impact in the south coast and parts of Bridgetown. Addressing a meeting of his Democratic Labour Party at the Princess Margaret Secondary School over the weekend, Brafwit openly accused the BWA of negligence while suggesting that managers at the statutory corporation should be sent home. If I was the minister responsible, and hopefully they will do it, you need to punish them because they have placed this country at risk. And one of the things that we do badly in this country, because everybody's a Kudir, the Kudir, you know, is a nice fella, et cetera, et cetera. But a significant failure of management. And if it was a private sector, failure of management of that magnitude, you get fired. You get sent home. But in government, in government, you try to do it, and the union is up in arms. So you place the whole country at risk. You place the, the tourism sector at risk. You place people's lives at risk. And if you if you are touched, if you're fired, the unions are the key clients. But some there's something wrong with that. And the reward for that kind of negligence has to be you find somewhere else to work. That's the only fair thing as far as I'm concerned. And I don't apologize for that position. A calamity. That's how road safety advocate Shamin Roland Bowen is describing Sunday's tragic accident that claimed the lives of four young people. The deaths of three young Vincentian females and one Barbadian male along the Grim Hall section of the ABC Highway brings to five the number of road fatalities since the start of the year. Roland Bowen, who is the president of the Road Safety Association, says the tragic events must serve as a wake-up call to authorities that urgent action is needed to help curb road accidents. The lives that were sacrificed on our roads yesterday and in recent years must serve as a wake-up call to action for all those involved in the everyday responsibilities of dealing with all categories of persons traversing our road network. Now is the time to act by prioritizing the safety of our people and ending the procrastination towards safety on our roads that is now occurring in this country. There has been five fatalities for the year, which is totally unacceptable. And we are pleading with all road users to be extremely vigilant, cautious, and to drive and act defensively on our roads. Meantime, the BRSA has launched a campaign entitled A War on Drink Driving. Roland Bowen says while she did not have statistics linking road accidents on the island to drinking and driving, 
She is convinced alcohol was a factor in many instances. The war on drink driving, on the drink driving campaign, is made up of primarily grassroots lobbying. It's, sorry. The war on drink driving, on the drink driving campaign, is made up of primarily grassroots lobbying of our representatives. We are no longer encouraging them to act but we are demanding that they act and put the lives of the people of this country as number one priority. And to do that with, and do that with, and do what any responsible and caring government official would do if they truly have the safety and well-being of its citizens and their interests at heart. Police are seeking the public's help with investigations into a house fire that occurred in Christchurch early Sunday morning. Fire of unknown origin broke out at the house of Winston Clarks in Maxwell Christchurch around 2 a.m. after he was jolted from his sleep by a crashing sound. Fortunately, the Barbados Fire Service responded in time and extinguished the blaze before it could engulf the home. Domini appealing to anyone with information on the incident to contact the Oystins Police Station or Police Emergency at 211 or Crime Stoppers. In sports, it was a nail-biting encounter at Kensington over last night as scoring 191 for the Barbados Pride was akin to climbing Mount Everest. And in the end, they just about reached the summit. Jamaica Scorpions 190 proved the marginally insufficient as the Pride registered a one-wicked victory in their round four clash of the regional Super 50 Zone B day-night championship match ending on 194-49. With a sizable crowd offering advice before and after each delivery and enjoying much agony after each fall of wicket, last pair Ashley Nurse who made 21 not out and Suleiman Ben, five not out, got Barbados pride over the line with Ben's punch down off the ground for four, bringing about a nerve jangling win in the 40th over. There's regional and international news after this short break. Read all about it, read all about it. Get your paper. Only 225, let's get your paper. Is you again with that steel news from yesterday? I got the Barbados today at on my phone and I just get my news for free. What do she? The Barbados Today, news you can trust. On the regional scene, former St. Lucia Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony breaks his silence on the controversial Desert Star Holdings Limited deal six months after losing the general election. He told the party faithful at a political meeting in VFO over the weekend, there will never be peace in the country if the deal is not renegotiated. If you're going to say that roads have to be shifted, public utilities have to be put in, and the government of St. Lucia must bear the cost, if you're going to say that if the developer requires additional lands, and if the government acquires the land for the developer, and the developer has to pay more for the lands, then the government must pay the difference between the price that the developer has offered and the actual price of the land. If you're going to say all these things, if you're going to take the money on from the passports, passports of our country, put it in an account overseas, we can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't feel it, then how on earth can there be peace? I say to the DSH developer, rethink. And finally, protest spreads across the United States over President Donald Trump's executive order banning travel to the U.S. from seven Muslim majority nations. More in this report from the CNN. From New York to Boston, Los Angeles, and beyond, all in response to the order that effectively bans 218 million people from seven Muslim majority states, uh, Muslim majority nations. Now, a U.S. citizen from Yemen says that his brother's wife and seven children were detained at an airport in Pittsburgh. They placed them in isolation in a small room, 
and treated them as uh, criminals or as people who may have committed a crime. If a six years old and a seven years old is a terrorist just because they came from Yemen, then I think where is the humanity? Now, the president issuing a statement that defends the ban, and it says, quote, we will continue to show compassion to those fleeing oppression, but we will do so while protecting our own citizens and border. To be clear, this is not a Muslim ban, as the media is falsely reporting. This is not about religion. This is about terror and keeping our country safe. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.populistoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good morning.